So many people dream about living on a boat and sailing around the world. It's a big risk. You need to leave everything behind. Like I retired early. I had a career as a surgeon, as a hospital executive. And I left a promising advertising career to chase that dream. Just over a year ago, that dream became a reality when we moved aboard our new catamaran. It hasn't been without challenges, getting caught in storms, boat repairs, and learning to be self-sufficient. But the most valuable resource we have in this world is time. We wanted to make the most of our time here, experience everything this beautiful world has to offer, and make an impact. So to make this easier for you guys, we're sharing everything we've learned living on and sailing our new catamaran over 4,000 nautical miles. Then the safety and the comfort upgrades and how much it cost to run a new sailing catamaran. And answer the question, will we do this again? Take the risk, sell everything, retire early, leave family and friends to embrace this life of uncertainty and adventure. Technically, we have honed our skills, harnessing the wind to sail in many different conditions, navigating to unknown destinations, understanding the weather and how to handle storms, making our own water, generating power mainly from the sun, and living self-sufficiently. These are all things that take a lot of practice and resilience. The Screecher was a new, powerful sail for us. Initially, we struggled to hand furl it on the starboard side. But thanks to a viewer for suggesting we use the jib to blanket the Screecher and making sure we're dead downwind, Fabio has been able to furl it much easier. We're really happy with the bridle system and prefer it over a traveler. Using the preventer to control the boom when sailing downwind works quite well. We have definitely spent way more time working on the boat than we expected and recognize we have a lot to learn in this department. This is the one thing that has made us question if we're really cut out for this lifestyle. It's also flexitic. It's really beautiful. It grips well, but it gets super hot and super dirty. And it's really hard to clean unless you use a pressure washer. In the cockpit, we got used to the fact that it's always going to look like this. Definitely do not install it in a humid environment like the head and the shower because it really gets moldy and it's super hard to clean. And also don't forget that between the flexi tick and the glue to stick it to the deck, it adds quite a bit of weight. You know how essential it is to keep your wife cool and comfortable. One of the first things we did was have exterior window shades made, which keeps the boat quite a bit cooler. We're also now having side clears made for the cockpit to protect us from rain or sea spray during rough weather. When it's rough, one of us is at the helm, so this will make it much more comfortable. When the boat was delivered, the boom sheet was tied around this uh, block with the bolin knot. We substituted with a soft shackle made of denima because this was really chafing terribly just only after a few months. Before heading up to New England, we had an anchor chain counter installed and purchased a remote to drop the anchor. Originally, we only had a chart plotter on the port helm, but ultimately decided to add a 12-inch plotter to the starboard helm and a 9-inch plotter at the inside nav station. We probably would prefer to have the 12-inch plotter inside as well, but are grateful just to have one inside, especially when it's cold, raining, or during night watch. As you have seen in our videos, we spent quite a bit of time in hand steering this summer. So we decided to go with an additional RAM. We bought a T3 from BNG and we were going to install them together, the T2 and the T3 at the same time, but we don't have room in the quadrants as it's set up now. And uh, so we're going to install the T3 and let the, leave the T2 as a backup. Uh, and we wish that we had uh, thought about that from the factory. For internet access, we had a Pepwave Max BR1MK2 installed along with the corresponding antennas for cell and Wi-Fi signal. We had it installed here. It has two SIM card slots. It'll use whichever carrier has the best signal. <laughs> and the first night that we had this, we were watching YouTube videos and we fell asleep and we burned through $50 of data in one night. So now we make sure that the Wi-Fi is turned on, the SIM cards are turned off unless we really want to use them. We installed larger heads with a stronger pump because the black water tank is six feet above the toilet. So it requires a really a lot of power. We did all these things to make our life more comfortable. But was that enough? The cruising lifestyle is so vastly different from our previous life and has caused us to change and grow personally. We've identified 10 keywords that are really kind of our main personal takeaways from this adventure so far. Appreciation. Everything takes a bit more effort. 
from groceries, boat supplies, to water, and getting rid of your waste. We appreciate everything a bit more. Meals seem to taste better. Wine definitely much more so. Clean, dry sheets and towels, warm showers. It's the little things that make a big difference. Community. In our previous life, we were completely self-sufficient, but a bit isolated. When we started this lifestyle, we began to need help. From Florida to Rhode Island to Maine, friends have invited us to stay at their docks and moorings, providing safe shelter and convenient access to shore. In Annapolis, we connected with the cruising community for the first time, and it was an incredible experience to be surrounded with people so passionate about the same lifestyle. You're connected almost by default, traveling to the same places in similar time frames with Mother Nature's grace. Conscious. We've become much more conscious of our impact on the environment, use of and management of resources, particularly food harvested from the sea, like clams in Rhode Island, fish off the coast of Gloucester, Massachusetts, and lobster in Maine, as well as the varied access to waterfront along the New England coast. We've made videos about each of these topics and have linked them in the description below. Self-sufficiency. This boat is very comfortable and luxurious, but there is still an aspect of self-sufficiency. Being able to fix things yourself, weather analysis, navigation, and long-term provisioning. Connection. Being out on the water and immersed in nature, you start to read its signals. From the shape of clouds in the sky, temperature of the wind, color of the water, presence of birds and fish. We are much more observant and cognizant of Mother Earth's voice and heed her advice. Independence. I want to be an equal partner in this endeavor. It's how I feel comfortable on the boat at sea. The knowledge of what to do in different circumstances makes me feel at ease and vastly increases my enjoyment. Previously, night sailing was always a challenge for me, but when we had to hand steer for 35 hours, I wanted to shoulder my share of the responsibilities. Being at the helm at night, using the stars to keep us on course, is the most present I have been in a long time. I was in that mystical state of flow, listening to the sound of the waves, mesmerized by the stars, learning. We have gained so much knowledge about the places we have visited and the waters we have sailed through. From the Stellwagen Bank National Marine Sanctuary, off the coast of Massachusetts between Provincetown and Gloucester. Originally formed as the glaciers from the last ice age retreated, now a rich fishing ground and home to three major whale species. To the history and controversy surrounding commercial and recreational fishing and shelf fishing in New England and the Chesapeake Bay. The charm of the historic and picturesque New England towns, Newport, Nantucket, and Provincetown. The magical beauty of the Maine coast in Acadia National Park, an oasis in a constantly changing landscape, tides revealing secret beaches and hidden lagoons, majestic evergreen trees perched atop rocky shores, revealing evidence of the glaciers that once ruled the land. Conservation. Living on a boat, we feel closer to the environment and recognize how important it is to take care of it. From the mangroves of the Bahamas, oysters in the Chesapeake Bay, and managing the harvesting of fish and shellfish, it takes effort to live in synchrony and conserve our beautiful planet. Presence. Being on passage in the open ocean without the distractions of modern day life, no internet, no cell service, gives you the space and time to just be. To be in the present moment, watching the wind in the sails, the cargo ships pass by in the distance, observing changes in the water as it turns different shades of blue, sunlight glinting on its crests, delighting in the different creatures found on board, watching the sun set and offering gratitude for another magical day spent on the ocean as the hues transition from golden to pastel. So Fabio, are you fulfilled? Well, uh, YouTube videos for sure sell sell a dream that is much different from reality. Yes. Would you agree on that? Yes. And we are also guilty of that because we show the highlight reel, you know? Um, but let us know in the comments if you guys would like to see more of what life is like day to day. May not be as entertaining or exciting, but we'd like to know. So in my previous life, uh, as an executive in hospital, as a surgeon, I was working with teams to address big issues. I had, a, I had people that were excited about working with me and, uh, and they were excited about solving problems, really coming back with solution, with uh, countermeasures to a problem in, a, in real time. And uh, now we've been working with a different type of, uh, in a different type of environment, right? <laughs> 
You had a fart? You heard it? I smelled it. Oh my god. Mm. <laughs> I smell it too. <laughs> wow. <laughs> when we're under sail in this beautiful weather and we're exploring new places, I, I am. I'm fulfilled. When we're spending time fixing stuff, which has happened a lot more than we were expecting, and we're struggling to get people on board to help us fix the stuff that breaks, and we're struggling with vendors to get the actual parts delivered, then I'm not. That's fair. So are you fulfilled? I previously was not in a high power job. You know, I worked in an ad agency, which was great, but I definitely wasn't the one telling people what to do. And before that, I worked uh, on my own in my photography business. So it was just me. So I'm used to working alone, making the YouTube videos and researching the places that we're going, learning about different things. It has been really fulfilling, especially when the videos perform well and we're getting comments and yeah. we're interacting with the viewers. It's great. But working on the videos, editing takes a lot of time that we are not spending together. Yeah. And if Fabio needs my help on a project, we have to decide, you know, okay, we have to not publish a video this week because right. we need to work on the project. So it's definitely a difficult balance that I'm working towards. Overall, I am fulfilled. I'm sure you've been waiting for this part. How much does it cost to maintain and run a new sailing catamaran for a year? We broke this down into different categories, additional equipment, maintenance, repairs, tools, navigation services, marinas and moorings, diesel, propane, registration, and pump out. We didn't order all of the bells and whistles out of the factory, so we ended up wanting additional equipment like B&G plotters, a backup autopilot ram, anchor chain counter, the dinghy engine, life raft, EPIRB, and additional miscellaneous safety supplies, and a PepWave router. We purchased the dinghy the year before, so that expense isn't in here. The cost for additional equipment was $25,733, and we had someone install the electronics since we're still learning these skills for an additional $5,206 making the grand total $30,939. Maintenance labor will probably be higher the first year because Yammer and Fisher Ponder require a certified mechanic to do the first service. We spent $2,164 on maintenance labor and $4,364 on maintenance parts for a total of $6,528. Most likely during the first year, you'll have some repairs that are covered under warranty and some that aren't. We shared some tips for a smoother warranty process in our last video, so we'll link that in the description below. Repair labor cost us $3,963 and repair parts were $6,050 for a total of $10,013. We purchased a few additional tools to the cost of $166. Navigation services, which for us is Predict Wind, were $26.45. Registering the boat and dinghy in Florida cost $772. We spent $4,560 on marina and moorings, but this year most likely this cost will go down a little bit because we'll be in the islands. We spent just shy of $2,000 in diesel this year, but that obviously varies according to your style of sailing and navigating. We spent about $77 on propane and we cook a lot and we spent about $200 in pump outs. Go ahead. Okay. You say it. I will. <laughs> Give me a second. <laughs> The grand total for the year was $58,309. This cost will most likely go down this year because we've purchased most of the additional equipment that we'd like to have on board. The things that we'll purchase this year are more nice to have, like paddle boards, possibly some scuba diving gear, maybe a compressor, but these aren't mandatory. So the question, the final question is that, would you do it again? I would. I think that the reward has outweighed the difficulties and I think that it will get better 
Most people say that when you buy a new boat, it takes about two years to really work out all the kinks and fix everything that needs to be repaired. May take a little bit longer given COVID. We're now one and a half years into this journey. The boat was delivered at the end of July, 2020. Yeah. yeah. So I think it will just continue to get better. And you, would you do it again? I think I would like you to ask me this question again next year. All right. That's I'll take fair. the fifth. <laughs> we hope that the information in this video was helpful for you. If you have any questions, please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.